Uh, welcome everyone to GGN. I have a bunch of articles to get to as far as the Middle East goes, uh, what's going on in Yemen, uh, Syria, uh, Asia. The Congress, uh, Congress triples Obama's request on defense cooperation with Israel. Most of you already know that uh, U.S. gives a lot of money and support to Israel. The final version of the Congressional Defense Budget triples the Obama regime's request uh, for funding for joint U.S.-Israel defense cooperation, $284 million. It was uh, released on December 10th, according to the Congress. Up from $96 million requested by the Obama regime. Includes funding for the Aero Long Range Anti-Missile Systems and this um, Iron Dome Missile System. Defense cooperation funding, uh, to which Israel contributes, is separate from the $3.1 billion Israel receives in defense assistance as part of a 10-year package. It says, separately, the House on Wednesday passed a bill by 399 to 0 that would enhance the U.S. commitment to Israel's, uh, basically, military edge in the region. 399 to 0. The full National Defense Authorization Act for 2014 is virtually assured passage. Former Governor of the Bank of Israel to become vice chair of the Federal Reserve. Uh, Governor Stanley Fisher, President Obama's leading candidate to become vice chairman of the Federal Reserve. So, and apparently he would be number two to the recently appointed Janet Yellen. Uh, UN Syria aid appeal is a bid to really trap terrorists. Uh, yeah, they've been going at each other's throats. Uh, they've been losing the, the on the ground battle. So, it says that uh, in this 2011 Telegraph article, uh, Libyan crisis, rebel leaders hoping to starve Gaddafi's stronghold of Sirte into submission. Rebel leaders hope to starve uh, Gaddafi's hometown of Sirte into submission, laying siege to his last remaining stronghold in an attempt to avoid mass bloodshed, according to the man's spearheading efforts for the peaceful takeover. Assisting them in the starvation of 100,000 civilians who populated the city of Sirte was NATO, who rained bombs down them upon the besieged city relentlessly, while terrorists on the ground cut off electricity, water, gas, food, and other essential supplies. They also covered this uh, article, UN warns Libya is short on water, fuel, and medicine, and despite the title of the report, the UN made no mention of tactics uh, the terrorists and other NATO backers uh, used. Instead, the UN was more concerned with the aiding with aiding areas of the nation already taken by NATO's proxy army. The Syrian Arab army surrounds Al Qaeda, so it's dragged on for three years. And um, like we said, they're not doing what they wanted to do, or maybe they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is creating a crisis. But this humanitarian aid is Hari Red Crescent style. Uh, so this year, as the UN prepares to flood the Syrian conflict with another $6.5 billion, tales of how aid money is ending up facilitating the activities of terrorists inside along Syria um, suggest that the U.S. is not trying to provide mercy for the Syrian people, but perpetuate the tragedy further still. So it says, in some areas, the terrorists have been completely surrounded, cut off from reinforcements and supplies. And just like Libya, the Syrian Arab army is waiting for the terrorists to be starved out rather than to uh, attempt a bloody assault. Now here's the kind of kicker here. It says that uh, unlike uh, in Libya, it says women and children, civilians, are allowed to leave the besieged areas, leaving the terrorists alone. Syrian Islamists execute 80 Druze, Alawites, and Christians in Adra. So a brief offensive against the Damascus suburb uh, and the Syrian military is once again in control. As usual, it was civilians that bore the brunt of the clash with reports of mass kidnappings and 80 civilians executed by the rebels before they were ousted. It was funny because I came across an article that was actually titled, The Rebels Promise to Prevent Kidnappings If They're Not Part of It. And back to this article about the UN... Uh, basically trying to perpetuate the tragedy further, They're acting like they want to give aid and stuff like that. They want to aid the terrorists to keep the keep it going. You have this. A Bankai Moon of the UN saying chemical arms used against both civilians and military targets in Syria. And so he doesn't really, he says, he doesn't really say who did it. He's just implying that it was done by the government because it says that uh, uh, it was done against uh, civilians and military targets. So pretty crazy, though, because, um, you know, he says that we have a deep concern 
you know, uh, we have a political and moral responsibility to hold accountable to those for those responsible. Well, it's been three years now, man. This has been going on. You guys haven't done a damn thing, but uh, you know, you're perpetuating it. So, uh, good job. Uh, also, they I, that's why I said it was kind of a loss for I think Syria because they did what? They gave up their chemical weapons and they're admitting guilt. So you can already see the narrative have been playing being played out. Kind of like what we were talking about. Uh, down the road, they could, uh, once they get those weapons out to sea and, uh, quote, dispose of them or process them, i.e. dumping them in the bottom of the ocean, um, they're going to uh, go back and say, well, uh, there's some, there's, uh, Assad lied and he didn't declare all of his weapons, so we better go bomb him now. Or they'll say that he's not fit to lead and then he needs to step down and then they'll put it all in the media pressure on him. So, um, Saudi's big deal for anti-tank missiles may be meant to help Syrian rebels. Analysis suggests Saudi's huge order for the U.S. anti-tank missiles may allow it to send it uh, its existing stockpiles of such weapons to anti-Assad rebels. Because they say no one's expecting a tank invasion of Saudi Arabia anytime soon. Uh, but the kingdom just put a huge order for the U.S. made anti-tank missiles. So they kind of go to the terrorists. Syrian Islamic Front to meet U.S. officials in Turkey. They seized the control of bases belonging to Western-backed militants last week, and they're due to hold talks with U.S. officials in Turkey. So it reflects the extent to which the Islamic Front Alliance has eclipsed the moderate or more moderate Free Syrian Army brigades, which uh, Western Arab powers try to vein and to build into the force able to fight the Syrian army. Also, you had um, some of the rebels, I think it was... Free Syrian army wanting to actually join along with Assad's forces to take these guys on. Speaking of Turkey, I just saw an article too. It's basically stating the obvious, which we've already covered, uh, which is just, I think it was so many thousands of weapons were have gone from Turkey or through Turkey into the uh, opposition's hands. And then this had this uh, massacre like we talked about in Syria. A terrorist group execute civilians and use residents as human shields. So he said the situation was terrible with killing, atrocities, and fear as the background. Unidentified armed men came into the town, but it was obvious that they were al Nasra militants. He also said the worst crimes they committed was that they toasted people in ovens used to bake bread. When those people came to buy it, they kidnapped and uh, beat up many. Syrian refugees to exceed 4 million by the end of 2014. Again, I think this is a complete success for the globalists as far as creating refugees. A uh, Saudi prince criticizes Obama uh, and his regime, citing indecisions in, Mideast, in the Mideast. Influential Saudi prince blasted the Obama regime on Sunday for what he called indecision and a loss of credibility with allies in the Middle East. That. So I think this kind of shows the further isolation of Saudi Arabia uh, by the U.S. Um, Bahrain, it's all about what they can get from you, you know? And so here they can get... the. Uh, a nice presence. The U.S. can have a nice U.S. presence, naval presence, especially with the Marines in that. Um, and Bahrain. Bahrain expansion is the latest signal of a uh, continued U.S. presence. 580 million expansion now underway at the U.S. Navy base here. It'll double in its size. Is a signal of the Pentagon's commitment to maintaining a strong presence in the Mideast. And uh, the king of Bahrain is ready for Gulf Union. We've covered this before. Strongly in favor of a Saudi proposal to upgrade the Gulf Cooperation Council, or GCC, into a union. They include Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Qatar, UAE, and Oman. Says Bahrain strongly supported their proposals, but other Gulf states have shown less enthusiasm, with Oman threatening last week to quit the loose alliance if the union proposal is pursued. You have BP signing a deal to develop $16 billion dollar Oman shale gas project. That's a 30-year gas production, sharing, and sales deal. So, you know, you have to remember you're competing against either Russia or Iran. So, airstrike kills 15 civilians. Maybe maybe the GCC, they're trying to, they're trying to create their own powerhouse instead of being lapdogs for, for Zionists out there in the West and the EU. Airstrike kills 15 civilians in Yemen by mistake. 15 people were on their way to, wedding, to a wedding in Yemen, were killed in an airstrike after their party was mistaken for an Al-Qaeda convoy. And you have the Yemeni parliament banning drone strikes. They voted on Sunday to ban the U.S. drone strikes inside their country.
They said here they voted to stop what drones are doing in Yemeni airspace, stressing the importance of preserving innocent civilian lives against an attack and maintaining Yemeni's sovereignty. However, the motions passed by the parliament are not binding, can be struck down by the president, and are seen as no more than recommendations to the government. I know one of the biggest gun countries in the world is Yemen, but uh, I don't know if this is really true. Just info, 32 million uh, Yemeni, whatever, rubles, whatever the currency is, and they're going to give them a lot of money. <laughs> and 100 guns are given as compensation to victims' families of the drone attack. And you go down here, and it says that the compensation was offered following the airstrike. The wedding procession, which killed the members, were killed immediately. Their bodies charred and torn into pieces beyond recognition. Some background. Stabilizing the country, which is also struggling with southern separatists and northern rebels, is an international priority, that's like the globalist agenda, due to uh, fears of disorder in a state that flanks top oil producer, not really anymore, Saudi Arabia, and major shipping lanes. That's the thing for the globalists, major shipping lanes. Uh, UAE funding former dictator's son for coup in, I in Iran. This is coming from Farce News. So you have like Qatar uh, supporting stuff like in Syria or Palestine. You have the UAE supporting and financing the son of former Yemeni dictator Abdullah Saleh to uh, help him gather support from his country's army um, and for staging a coup. Not really sure why Yemen's in the news all of a sudden. Uh, besides a drone strike, they have drone strikes all the time. Um, but it says here that is Iran playing games in Yemen? They're saying it's no stranger that the, to accusations that Iran funnels money into the country to fund a group known as the Houthis. So I remember reading today about um, Yemen's use as kind of a battleground between different factions, kind of like you know they're doing in Syria with different rebels, proxy armies. Uh, China bitterly attacks Japanese prime minister over air zone, the air defense zone remarks. Uh, Japanese leaders' comments that Beijing is violating freedom of aviation are condemned as malicious slander. So some people think that um, this isn't really Japan asserting itself recently, militarily and all that. Uh, it's really just the U.S. behind them. Assailants, or the Western trading bloc. Assailants stab a Japanese diplomat in Yemen, so I guess that's how the answer to. Drove his car on Sunday and uh, yeah, suffered five stab wounds in the morning unclear if the attack was an attempt to kidnap the diplomat, but he's okay now in the hospital, they say. Uh, U.S. Navy helicopter crashes in Japan. This is all like recent news. None of these are really old at all. U.S. Navy helicopter crashes near Tokyo Monday in a failed emergency landing, injuring two of the four men aboard. The accident came at a sensitive time with the Japanese public wary over the long plan, but stalled relocation of a U.S base in southern Okinawa. Actually, they had a terror, uh, I think it was a terrorist attack or something like that. And then in China, terrorists, two police among at least 16 dead after uh, an armed clash in China. Armed clashes between what they call thugs carrying explosives and machetes left police uh, and police left 16 people dead. The province is home to the Uyghurs, a Turkish speaking Muslim minority covered this before about jihad operations they've been previously blamed for the attacks in the area they wanted to establish an independent state called east turkestan i said i think i said turkish it's turkic apparently they're um carrying out operations in pakistan as well uh this article is from the 11th is war with china inevitable um i don't look at china as you know any more evil or more benevolent than the u.s um but it could, you could see something as far as for world domination of the economy and all that uh, play out. Resources for control. Um, all, also, too, when things go more autonomous, fully autonomous, and all these humans aren't really needed, these citizens, um, uh, you can see wars in space, for space, or at least outside the planet, kind of like a little type of environment like the movie Elysium depicted. There's been a call made to Congress for a Chinese war plan. A group of defense analysts told a House committee on Wednesday they should buy more uh, Virginia-class uh, attack submarines, prioritize long-range anti-ship missiles, carrier-based drones, missile defense. Uh, China successfully landed a rover on the moon. Deal for them, it's, they're only one of three other nations, the U.S. and the Soviet Union, to do it. Although they might be met by some other group already up there uh, exploiting resources in that. Khan successfully launched a research rocket carrying a second monkey into space. And we'll uh, come back with this uh, uh, this type news of Asia and uh, 
color revolutions and that, where U.S. is voicing concerns at Russia's missile plants near the EU. Thank you.